Metal Recording Nerds! So we're picking up where we left off from last week's video on Guitar Cab Tonewood. Now, I just want to thank everyone for watching it and giving their opinions on what they thought which cab was made out of which wood. Now, we got an awful lot of comments, and as I'm sure will surprise no one, the comments were all over the place. Now, one observation I can make from this little experiment, at least as far as human behavior is concerned, is that it's very difficult to get, come to any kind of consensus about sound once the visual aids are removed. Without being cued by the visual, we're left using our ears and it becomes much more difficult to make an accurate assessment. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. We're a visual species by nature and that's why it takes years to train as an audio engineer. So we're left with two more steps in the scientific method that we started with in the last episode. And that's number six, analyze the data. Now here's a couple of very interesting statements we got from you guys. Interesting. I heard some distances, but nothing drastic. To my ears, cabinet C sounded like it had the most bottom end to the tone, while cabinet B had a little less, and cabinet sounded the flattest. Between those, I like the tone from cabinet B the best. I'm gonna say cabinet C was the plywood cabinet, cabinet B was the particle board with the wood baffle, and cabinet A was the MDF cabinet. Roar, Jonathan! At least concerning which cab was made of what wood, you were completely off the mark. Great video! I believe the cabinet A will be the particle board cab just because of how particle board is made with essentially wood chips and is not as dense as MDF or plywood for that matter. And I feel like some frequencies get filtered out because of that. With that, I really couldn't hear any difference between B and C, so I'm going to guess that B is MDF and C is plywood. This is all based on the solo tracks and listening through Cali LP6s, and even then the differences were still very subtle between A and the others. As for the full mix section, there was no way to tell the difference. I really tried to hone in on hearing any tone shifts, but I couldn't tell. I also appreciate the fact that you changed the cabs at random times rather than the beginning of a new measure in the playthroughs, which made this even harder to tell the differences. Awesome job, man. Mike, your analysis was spot on. Correct on all points. Take a bow, dude. The overall sound is great, but that bass sound is so brutal. Absolutely love it. Keep up the awesome work, Glenn. And you're not the first guy to comment on that bass tone. That is something special coming soon from Spectre Digital. I think you guys are gonna like what's coming out. So let me run both tests again and reveal what cab is playing in the full mix. Here's the soloed up tracks as well.
Next up, let's move over to the desktop for a closer analysis. Okay, just moving over to the desk here, I want to take a look at single 57 tracks of each rhythm guitar sound just to go between the three different cabinets here. I've got them all gain matched uh, so we can get a pretty good idea of what we're going on. And we're going to do a couple null tests as well. Up top here, we've got the MDF and then we've got the plywood and number three down here is the particle board. And here's my observation so far. I mean... <laughs> The MDF and the particle board are so close they could be considered identical. I mean, like, I think I hear a change when I move from one track to the next, but obviously I couldn't tell a freaking difference in the full mix if I tried. I mean, like, just listening back to it, I couldn't tell where the changes are. But when we move over to the particle board cab, there's definitely something going on there. So from particle board to MDF or particle board to plywood, it doesn't matter. There's a pretty serious shift going on there. So my observation is don't build your cabinet out of particle board. And here's why. We can hear a resonance going on. It's like the cabinet is humming at a certain frequency. It's like this whoo kind of thing going on. And it's happening right here. If we pull up the graphic EQ, we can actually localize this right here at 510 hertz. Let me pull this up. I'll show you what I mean. This is what I'm talking about. Right there. Just got that nasty. Now, if we take this out here, I'm actually going to move that off the master bus, and I'm just going to take that off the master. I'm just going to have it right on the particle board tr cab track, and I'm kind of curious what's going to happen if uh, we take that out and now start comparing. Okay, still a pretty different top end. I really like the sound of that MDF cab though. Now, once again, we null out the, the MDF and the plywood cabs. Yeah, we can hear a shift in the top end because there's so much left. So that tells me, yes, they do have a slightly different top end going on. Uh, whereas the MDF versus the particle board, you just hear that nasty ass hum at 500 Hertz. And then if we do the plywood versus the particle board again and null those out, that's just wow. So it tells me there's not too much difference in the top end. It's just that 500 hertz thing going on. Um, that could have something to do with the baffle we use because we did take the plywood baffle out of the plywood cab and put it into the particle board cab interesting stuff. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we're definitely hearing a frequency shift. Step seven, conclusion. So the one conclusion that I can draw from all of this is don't build your cabinet out of particle board, at least unbraced particle board. Anyway, we're going to pick this experiment up again in a few weeks to see if bracing the baffle is enough to get rid of that resonance at the mid 500 hertz range that sticks out like a sore thumb once you've identified it. Even in a full mix, it really sticks out. It's one of those things that you just cannot unhear. By the way, if somebody out there has a suggestion for software to capture an average frequency analysis that I can use as a still image, I'd really appreciate it because everything I've got is real time and it's kind of hard to pin things down. But as for the question plywood versus MDF, the tone difference is pretty tiny when soloed up and it's pretty much non-existent in a full mix. I couldn't tell the difference when playing back without some kind of visual cue. So what this means is that if you've got a cheap MDF cab at home, you've already got something that's pretty freaking awesome. If you want to really get the best out of it, consider upgrading your speakers to some EVHs or some Neo Creambacks because both are credible alternatives to the done to death Vintage 30. And another note is that old Behringer cabs are definitely worth hot riding. They're definitely far cheaper than paying a premium price for a name brand cab that really isn't going to offer any sonic advantage over MDF. Now about those Behringer cabs, the stock Jensen's that they came with suck giant hairy donkey balls, but the cabs themselves, they sound great with better speakers. Now bear in mind, if you're a gigging musician, MDF is heavy and it's nowhere near as resilient as plywood. 
a plywood cabinet can stand up to the abuses of the road. And if you live in a humid environment, forget about MDF altogether. So, is Tonewood a thing for cabinets? Eh, sort of. Using good material, the differences were negligible to unnoticeable. Soloed up, I liked the sound of the MDF the best as it seemed to be a bit more aggressive in the top. But then again, MDF is heavier, so the speakers have more to push off against. This could in turn make the sound produced just slightly louder and the perceived slight improvement in tone could just be the Fletcher Munson effect. So I can't say which one sounds better conclusively. However, I can say that particle board resonates in a really nasty way and the tone in the wood is in fact at 510 Hertz. So if you do have cabinet tone wood, please consider changing to something that won't resonate as much because if your cabinet is producing a tone, it probably shouldn't be. So next up, we're not only going to try bracing the particle board cab, but we're also going to try two different baffles. Because one other question I've never heard answered is, what's the difference between front and rear loaded speakers? There's a lot of opinions out there on the subject, but unsurprisingly, almost no evidence either way. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this experiment. It's definitely been educational. And if you found it useful, please make sure you subscribe. See you next time.